Okay, so I have achieved some things um, or am about to achieve some things. So let's talk about the thing that I achieved, which is I used this ESP32 to generate my waveform, um, which is much more, <laughs> much easier than this thing. Also, I can tune it by uh, my phone. So it was a bit easier than constantly checking this thing, having to look up the frequency here, which isn't that accurate. So <clears throat> on the phone, I can set the PWM frequency of this thing uh, with the program that I put on it. And wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I can set the frequency and the duty cycle is always 50% and it seems the frequency is adjustable in one hertz steps at least for the most part so I can just go up and down in one hertz steps and I found one resonant frequency for the thing which is um, according to this one at 45,450 hertz um, and it is in the range of a few hertz like in only the bandwidth of the resonant frequency is 5 hertz which is ridiculous like I could have never have achieved this with this thing here and then reliably uh, reproduced on this one uh, with the frequency we got you see it says 46.15 kilohertz but the ESP says different so yeah who's right now I don't know what this thing is probably a bit wrong so I just assume that the frequency is a bit off here. So if we now switch on the power, <coughs> we can see we're already pulling 360 milliamps. I think the maximum I had last time was like 270. So we get a bit more power in this thing and I can feel it. It's like silky smooth when you touch it and like small dust particles. Let's see if I can just put something here. Okay, this is... Oh yeah, oh, you see, it's behaving weirdly if you can even see it on the camera Oop. yeah so it's sliding if you can see it um well, let's see if the camera's on yep the camera's on let's see Oop. yeah it's just moving because of the f frequency <laughs> but this is um, a third, so four watts is what we are pumping, pumping in this here now. The thing is, this is rated 35. So things I have to improve: a bigger cables. I guess that the resistance of the cables plays some role here. I don't know this number. Yeah, the number changes if I wiggle the wires. So I guess that is one thing that has to do with it. So we get additional uh, resistance by the wires and these are crappy wires anyway they came from the from one of the battery holders uh, for my 18650s that are cheaply from China so I, I have to replace these with proper wires but this is still very far away from 35 watts also I guess the rating for this volt, um, right, the voltage is 24 volts and we're running 12 volts I know this thing here can do more Let's see, is this warm? Nah, not really. Um, so this thing can do more. Uh, like, I don't know, was it 20 or 30 volts? At least it could do enough for this. The problem is, uh, this circuit here is not made for that kind of power. <clears throat> uh, not that kind of power, that kind of voltage. So I will have to modify this. Uh, modify, mod modify, yeah. Um, and let's look, take a look at the circuit in general with the temperatures. You see, there's a hot spot here on the right, which translates to one of these LEDs. And well, how hot is it? Yeah, it's it's kind of I don't know. Can can, can you see this? Mm, glare. Yeah, this. I don't know if you, ah here maybe this. Now you can see it. So. This one LED is like the hottest part of the border. Yeah, it's the one closest to the other blue thing. Um, so, 
I have to modify this circuit, I guess. Um, I don't know if I will be able to do it. I will probably just try to bridge the LED uh, the diodes because they are... Um, <laughs> I almost guess they are burning the power that's in here. Um, so, because these are here to catch the... the f um, do you call it flyback? Like, when you power a motor and you switch off the the coil, so switch off the motor, you get a, f a, a back motion. So, yeah, this is um, there to catch this and not damage the circuit. Um, next thing, this is currently just... Uh, um, just one of it is going always from ground to VCC back to ground and the other one stays at ground um, Which is nice and everything, but not what we want. We want It not to just go one up. We want it to go up the other one down and then change so we get a, a bigger Potential difference Well, actually that means we could keep the 12 volts could we? No, wait. I'm stupid, sorry. Uh, no, we cannot keep the 12 volts. Um, I'm talking bullshit. So, yeah, currently we have Emma, we have this, but we want this to get uh, a hopefully better uh, response out of this thing. So, I have to program this. I hope that, yeah, I, I don't think it works though, so because I need <laughs> to get the opposite out of a different pin. Yeah, this is hard on the ESP because the underlying system software is closed source. The CPU that's used in here is closed source, so you can't even get the instruction set and do some magic stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a bit more complicated to get this working properly, but at least we have a way to uh, yeah, set the frequency. This is getting quite hot. I should switch this off. <coughs> so, yeah. Also, the current dropped to 270 for some reason. I don't know why. Ah, this is hot. Yeah, that's another problem. This thing is getting ridiculously hot with just 4 watts. I mean, 4 watts pouring into this and this thing here. It has to go somewhere. And the problem is if you just get generate heat, that's bad. We need the movement. Uh, the 4 watts as movement power, <laughs> not just um, heat. So I don't know if that is an artifact of me just switching it on and off and not um, go in the other direction. Maybe also the diodes fold. So I have to investigate more about um, piezo drivers. So this is one part. This is um, what I have achieved. So at least I know the f um, point of resonance. I hope that is the point of resonance and not just one of them. Um, Usually they are not that close together, so I just assume that this is the point. I will maybe make more um, a more sophisticated setup, so I let this measure the current and then just ramp up the frequency and record everything and find out where the current is the highest, where the consumed current. <coughs> but that's a project for another day. But yeah, I could... No, I can, well, I could maybe use these for this, so let's see if that works, so that uh, 1 watt, not quarter, 1 watt, 1 watt, I think it's 1 watt resistors, 1 ohm, maybe I can use that for it, and if not, I will just use a bigger one and an up amp, which means I will probably run out of, no, actually it should work, just need one negative rail, and yeah, if I, I can't just let this run of 5 volts, that's okay, <laughs> that should work too. So this is like the, um, the driving circuit. Now let's come to the thing I prepared here. Um, camera? Camera's here. Okay, so um, I said I was a bit scared of having a knife flying around my uh, workshop here. So I kind of um, squeezed it in here with this angled piece of wood and just torqued it down. I mean, it could just 
cut the wood with the knife because I sharpened it before. I should not have done this. So it's, it's reasonably sharp just cutting the wood. So, But it's relatively rigid. And I will try to um, drill a hole in the knife. And we see how this goes. Also now with um, the power output I'm getting from this. I kind of start to understand um, why this isn't really really a thing, the, the non-commercial or uh, the, the cheaper sonic knives, because you need a lot of power to move this piece of metal front to back, so maybe I have to use a smaller knife? Or, nah, I don't know, I don't want to cut something off this, so... Yeah, we will make it work. Also, I have the suspicion if I attach the knife to this and whatever else I use to connect it, yeah, this thing here, um, I will get a different frequency response uh, or resonant frequency. Um, so, yeah, probably have to change everything here uh, again after I assembled it. But for now, I know there is a resonant frequency and that I probably have to put in a bit more power. So yeah, I said we need 24 volts, so even if we do this one, we still only have 24 volts difference on each cycle, which is, uh, well, we need 24 volts difference, and I thought if I just go negative, which this one cannot do, uh, I would get 24 from the 12 volt, but yeah, this one doesn't do this so yeah to-do list bigger cables maybe modify circuit to uh, support higher voltages I mean it can do 15 or up to 20 but yeah it gets close to breaking point because you have a voltage regulator here which uh, needs uh, which provides the 5 volt logic voltage for the thing so we need something else to provide 5 volts then. Well, I have some uh, buck converters. Is this one? Yeah, this is a buck converter. I can use this. To, it's adjustable. It has a tiny little pot here on the corner. You can see that. Um, I can use that to maybe create the 5 volts. This has a jumper that I can just uh, take out and turn off this part. So I can provide the 5 volt by different rail. Um, then you still have the power LED and the little resistor. I probably have to just unsold the resistor or the LED. Um, and then this thing should be able to take uh, more voltage. These caps are rated at 35 volts, but they're also a bit sketchy. The, the coloring is bad. So, uh, yeah, not very sure about these, if they can really take 35 volts. <laughs> I'm not gonna... I'm trying to not push it and... Keep everything monitored with my floor <laughs> so nothing blows up because I hate it when stuff blows up. So, at least when it's my stuff and if it's not on video. So, <clears throat> okay, modify this. Um, here, find a way to invert the signal coming out of the pin and piping it into the second input. I am unsure how to do this yet. So what I could do is um, create a little inversion circuit. I guess it's just a simple, was it PNP or NPN? I think NPN, well I would have to use an NPN anyway. Um, NPN, yeah. I guess I could use that to um, invert the signal for the second pin. So. That's covered. I don't have, um, or maybe I do have, ICs to invert a signal. But these ICs are probably 16 pin or 14, and sort of bit too big for <laughs> what I'm going to do because it just be one inversion thing. Um, I will try the solution with tr just a little transistor first, if that works. So, invert the signal to do, and drill a hole which I will attempt right now and yeah if you see the video you know I'm still alive <laughs> so yep bye bye guess what I survived
I survived drilling holes into the knife. It did not burn my drills and it also didn't fly through the workshop, so yay! Um, and I even found the right screws for it, at least those that fit the holes and the brackets, so that's great. Um, <laughs> now the thing is, it just looks a bit tiny on here, but yeah, <laughs> that's basically it. Um, I don't know how I will mount it on there. I will probably just really just glue it on here. And that's it. <laughs> Man, this this it's just nah. This looks horrible, but okay. So yeah, that's how the knife will be mounted on here. Um and I will just mount the handle after I've machined it down just on the opposite side. <laughs> this is the most clutch together thing ever but yeah I hope it will at least work a bit um, if we can get I mean even with 4 watts only if we can get the vibration from here to the knife we will already have something that probably cuts much better than it would without uh, any <laughs> any ultrasonic so because I tried to hold this on here and it just didn't vibrate because a I had it in my hand and b um, it it started to oscillate at a at an audible frequency of like ten hertz so it didn't really connect with the thing it was just making screaming noises um, yeah I should have probably videotaped that but eh forget that <coughs> so yeah now we have the knife we have the holes. Now I have to machine this and glue it on here and do all the other things and we will have a prototype which will probably not work but <laughs> let's see. Let's see if we can get it to work. So what still irks me about this setup is I need a fucking ESP32 to generate the frequency. <laughs> um, and I did not plan to give the knife any Wi-Fi capabilities. <laughs> So it would be really nice if I could use like discrete logic, well, logic, uh, discrete parts, so analog stuff, to generate the frequency. But given given that the oscillating frequency is within a few hertz, like how many percent is that? So that's a quarter percent. This is one. Wait, no. A God dang it, percentages are hard. Um, in a thousand hertz. So a quarter... A tenth of a quarter. I think one hertz in this case is a tenth of a quarter percent. So 0 0.025 percent. Nah, this, this is still not right. Where is it? <laughs> yes. Let's say, okay, if we have, yeah, I think it's even less, it's 0.0025%, so if you say like the bandwidth 5, you have 0 0.0125, um, percent of the uh, accuracy is what you need to generate the frequency, and I don't trust, like, stuff like this, I mean, I can't put such a pot on the thing, I need some uh, digital logic that I can fine-tune and then set it in memory. It would be great if I could use this because this is small and cheap and this is big bulk and overpowered for what I want to do with it. But this is just a prototype so... Yep. <laughs> At least we got some progress. So yeah, till next video. Bye bye.